When you're doing proof trees for first order logic, you've got to deal with the quantifiers. You've got to replace variables with constants. One problem that often crops up is it's difficult to know which constants to put in for which variables. So let me talk you through that. Hello everyone, welcome to The Attic. My name's Mark Jago. I'm a philosophy professor in the UK. In this video, I'm going to talk you through a specific problem that crops up when we're doing proof trees for first order logic. So in the previous video, I introduced you to the rules that you need for dealing with the quantifiers. I introduced you to the rule for the universal quantifier. Check out that video, it's linked up here. One of the things that we have to do is get rid of the universal quantifier add the sentence that's just like the one that we started with, but we replace all the variables with an old constant. We get to pick which constant that is. So if we've got a whole bunch of old constants in our branch, how do we know which one to put in where? Often, when we're dealing with first order logic, we have a sentence with multiple universal quantifiers. Like we might be talking about for all x, for all y, for all z, blah, 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 blah. And when we do that, we have to work out which name are we going to put in for X, which one for Y, and which one for Z? There's maybe lots of different ways of doing that, and sometimes that gets really confusing, and if we don't get it right, our, our tree might go on way longer than it needs to. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how we kind of work out which constants should go where. So if that sounds good to you, give this video a thumbs up. That really helps me out, and why not subscribe to the channel? So let's suppose we've got a bunch of premises like this, and here's our conclusion. So we've written down the negation of that conclusion. In dealing with these sentences, look, we've got a whole bunch of universal quantifiers here, okay? And we've got some names. We've already got A and B, um, and we're going to introduce some new ones as well. And when we get to it, we're going to have this issue, right? We're going to have, I think, probably four names, A, B, C, D. Which one goes in for X, which for Y, which for Z? How do we work that out? So what we're going to do is we're going to start working through this tree, get to the point where it becomes an issue, and then I'll talk you through it. So before we have to worry about that, let's just start off with the simple stuff. So we've got a negated universal, so that becomes an existential. We can deal with that existential straight away by introducing a new name. Okay, existentials always have new names. We've introduced a new one, C. So now we've got A and B and C. So nothing else we can do with that. Now, it's going to turn out to be very useful to do a kind of modus ponens thing with the for all x, hx, and the all x, hx thing here. However, we can't just do modus ponens on it straight away because this universal quantifier spans this whole bracket here. So we have to instantiate this one, instantiate this one, and then do the modus ponensy type thing, or at least the, the tree version of modus ponens. So let's do that. Do we want to instantiate that with A or B or C? We could start trying to work it out at this point, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you what I would do. And then once we've done it, I'm going to explain why. So I'm going to instantiate this with C and also this one with C. So we get this and this, and this is the antecedent of this. So we can do that modus ponens type thing, the branching rule on this one. So it's going to branch into left and right. We get not H, C on the left, but that's going to close straight away. So we get this on the right. So we've still ended up with just one branch open, and it's the consequent of this conditional here. That's what I meant when I said the modus ponens type thing. So here we've got an existential. So to use that, we have to introduce another new name. I've already got A, B, and C in the branch, so we're going to introduce D. I'm not going to do the conjunction elimination just yet. You'll see why in a minute. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start instantiating these universal quantifiers here. This is a good point to pause and think about which constant is going to go where. OK, we've got A, we've got B, we've got C, and we've got D. Which one are we going to put where? Like I said at the beginning, we don't want to start trying all combinations. That'll just get way too complicated. Our tree just gets way too big. What we've got to think about is what is going to help us close this branch? How are we going to get a contradiction on this branch? And here's the clue. We've got not RCC. 
negated sentence, so I want the negation of that or the thing without the negation. So if I can get RCC on its own, I've got a closed branch. How am I going to get that? Well, this is the sentence that I haven't used so far. So I'm going to try and get RCC out of it. Now, the trouble is, look, this has got an X and a Z in its consequent. So that is hinting to me that I want that to be RCC. OK, so I want X to be C and I want Z to be C. So I'm going to have to work out what this bit should be, given that X is C and Z is C. In other words, what's Y going to be? Ha ha ha. Have a look at this sentence down here, right? I've got R, C, D and R, D, C. That's got the same form as that bit. It's got the C in for the X and the C in for the Z. So that's telling me I want to make Y D. OK, if I put C in for X and Z and D in for Y, then I'm going to get an instance of this that's going to allow me to close the tree with this thing. So let's do that and see if it works. So we're going to start instantiating this sentence and we need to do it one quantifier at a time. So we're going to get C in for X. We're going to get D in for Y and we're going to get C in for Z. OK, so this is the instance of this that has C for X, D for Y and C for Z. This is an if then. And basically now we're just dealing with propositional logic. So we branch left and right. On the left, we get the negation of this. On the right, we get this. But this is the negation of this, isn't it? So that branch closes. That's why I didn't bother doing conjunction elimination there. We basically don't need it. This contradicts directly with this. OK, so here's our open branch. We've got RCC. That's what we wanted to get because it contradicts with not RCC that we had earlier. So that branch closes and we've got a finished closed tree. All the branches closed. So that is a proof of that conclusion from those premises. OK, so that was an example of how we try to kind of look ahead, try to work out what's going to help us close the branch and use that information to work out which names we put in for which variables when we're instantiating the universal quantifier. That was a bit of a gerrymandered example, because if you think about these premises here, this one and this one are completely irrelevant to deriving the conclusion. It follows just from those premises there. These bits were just like decoys to give you extra names. So we had to think about, oh, do we use A, do we use B or whatever? OK, they didn't really play a role in that proof. But there are going to be other examples more complicated than this when we've got names that we really do need to use and we have to work out which one goes where. OK, so whenever you get a situation like that with the universal quantifier, you've got to look ahead and try and think about which instances of the universally quantified sentence are going to help you close the branch. Work backwards to work out which names go for which variables. OK, guys, so I hope that helps clear up a little bit of that issue. It can get pretty complicated. Lots of my students get worried by that kind of issue. So I hope this has helped a little bit. If you enjoyed the video, Give it a thumbs up. That really helps me to reach more people on YouTube. And if you've got questions, leave me a comment down below. I'm going to be continuing with the topic of proof trees in the next video. We're going to think about proof trees that never close. OK, I hope you join me back for that.